Carbon. The element of life. But why? What makes carbon so important for life? Why are all living things made of carbon? What makes it unique compared to the other 92 naturally occurring elements? Well, here's the short answer. Carbon can form many types of complex molecules required by life. It is incredibly versatile. Arrange carbon atoms one way and you have diamonds, one of the hardest materials in the world. Rearrange carbons another way and you get graphite, which is both soft and pliable. To understand the unique and versatile properties of carbon, we should get to know this element a little better. So here's our learning objectives for today. First, I'm gonna give you some basic facts about carbon. Second, I'm gonna explain where carbon comes from. Third, I'm gonna talk about its atomic structure because this atomic structure lends itself to forming organic molecules. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about these things called functional groups, which have a lot of carbon in them because when we add a functional group to an organic molecule, they change the chemical and physical properties. Let's start with some basic facts about carbon. It's the atomic symbol C for carbon. The atomic number of carbon is six, which means it has six protons. The atomic mass of carbon is 12. What that means is all carbon atoms have six protons and most isotopes of carbon have six neutrons. There are other isotopes of carbon. And two of the more common isotopes of carbon, or at least commonly known, are carbon-13 and carbon-14. Also, another physical property of carbon is that it is a solid at room temperature. It is also the sixth most abundant element in the universe. And the name carbon itself comes from the word carbo, which is Latin for coal. Our next question, where does carbon come from? Like all elements, carbon is made of tiny subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and electrons, they date back to the Big Bang and the origins of the universe about 13.7 billion years ago. But carbon atoms were not created there in the Big Bang. Instead, they were made by stars in a process called nuclear fusion. All stars are basically giant balls of hydrogen gas. In their cores, temperatures can reach millions of degrees, so hot that protons overcome their repulsion of each other and they fuse, forming other elements like helium. In fact, nuclear fusion is happening right now in our sun and is a source of energy on our planet. Eventually, stars run out of hydrogen as helium accumulates in their cores. At this point, nuclear fusion stops. When this happens, the core of the star begins to collapse under its own gravity, causing temperatures to rise to unimaginable temperatures like above 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. It's at these high temperatures that nuclear fusion starts again, this time fusing helium into heavier elements, including carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Now, it's the size of a star that determines its fates. Stars like our own sun, they'll go through several rounds of contractions in the core, making heavier elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, but eventually, they will run out of this fuel and nuclear fusion will stop forever and the star will contract forming a densely packed object called the white dwarf and it will spend billions of years cooling off eventually becoming a black dwarf and blending in with the rest of the universe now large stars have a much different fate they explode forming some of the most spectacular events in the universe called a supernova and when these stars go to supernova they spread all the elements they formed into the galaxy around them. That means that all the carbon on Earth and inside of you was formed inside of a star through nuclear fusion. So the carbon inside of you is ancient. It's five billion years old, and it has been continuously recycled between rocks, the atmosphere, and living organisms, including you. Now that we know where carbon came from, third, why is carbon so important for life? Why not the other 91 naturally occurring elements? Why aren't they considered vital for life? To understand this question, we need to know something about carbon's atomic structure. Carbon has the atomic number six, meaning it has six protons, but it also has six electrons. Recall that the number of protons equal the number of electrons, and it's the electrons that are very important for giving elements a lot of their chemical properties. So now we need to know about electrons. So the electrons are found outside the nucleus in a region called electron shells. Carbon has two electron shells. The first shell holds two electrons and is full 
and it's not going to be involved with making chemical bonds. However, the second electron shell holds up to eight electrons, but carbon only has six electrons, which means it has four in the outer shell. Now what this means is that carbon's second electron shell has four empty spaces, meaning it can bond with up to four other atoms. Because of its ability to form four covalent bonds, now a covalent bond is sharing of electrons between two different elements to fill those electron shells, carbon can be arranged in many different ways. For example, carbon can form long chains, it can form branching chains, it can form ring structures. And many of the large organic molecules, like proteins, are polymers made up of smaller building blocks, like amino acids, that are also made around carbon. In fact, carbon is so versatile, that there are almost 10 million carbon compounds that have been discovered. Now, another reason why there are so many carbon compounds is because of something called a functional group. Now, let's talk about functional groups. They're very important because they change the chemical properties of molecules. You can think of a functional group. These are specific elements added to a molecule where each functional group will function basically the same way regardless of which molecule it's attached to. Now there are lots of functional groups. However, for our purposes, we only need to know six. Hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, amino, phosphate, and methyl. So here's an example of how a functional group works. Let's take ethane. It's a hydrocarbon and a gas at room temperature. Now, you add a hydroxyl group to ethane and you get ethanol. This is an alcohol. Ethanol is liquid at room temperature. And the reason why is because it can form hydrogen bonds with water. By adding a hydroxyl group, the properties of ethane are changed. In this case, ethane goes from being a gas at room temperature to being a liquid at room temperature. And in fact, if you start adding hydroxyl groups to any molecule, it will make it more and more dissolvable in water. We also call that function hydrophilic. Anything that's hydrophilic, hydro means water, philic means water loving, it's water loving. You can also think of it as like interacts with like. Hydroxyl groups will interact with anything that looks like another hydroxyl group, including water. And the reason why is because they can form hydrogen bonds. This is also why sugar can easily dissolve in water. And that's because sugar has five hydroxyl groups, all forming hydrogen bonds with water. The take home point here is the small changes in molecules can make large differences in the way a molecule functions. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at the difference between testosterone and estradiol. Estradiol is a type of estrogen. And when you look at testosterone and estrogen or estradiol, you'll realize there's only two differences in the functional groups. The difference between a hydroxyl and a carbonyl and the presence and absence of a methyl. And the difference here is enormous. One makes a boy, testosterone, and the other makes a girl, estradiol. So there you have it. Carbon is the element of life simply because it is capable of forming up to four different covalent bonds and those covalent bonds are stable.